Did you see that fucking save? Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy. I'm here at Pink Bikes Cross Country Field Test. Now, Transition didn't invent this whole long and slack thing, but they're definitely one of the brands that has fully embraced it. And now they're applying that approach to geometry to this, their all new Spur. It's a 120 millimeter travel 29er that's designed to be lightweight, cover ground quickly, but according to Transition, also be able to descend anything that you may come across on your ride. Rather than starting life as a cross-country race bike that gets a bump up in travel and a few burlier components, I'm talking about the Scalpel and the Epic Evo, the Spur began life intended for rowdier riding. There are three different versions of the Spur and it all starts at the $5,000 GX bike. This one, this is the X01 version, it's $6,000 and for that, you're getting DT Swiss's XR 1700 wheels, a SID Ultimate Fork, a SID Lux Shock, and can you guess what kind of drivetrain? So our X01 test bike weighs 24.7 pounds with the Schwalbe control tires installed. Transition says that a frame comes in at 2,500 grams. Now that is definitely a little bit heavier than those race bikes that got a bump up in travel that I mentioned earlier. Cannondale Scalpel SE, they say that their frame weighs around 1,900 grams and the Epic Evo frame is right around there too. And you're looking at around a 600 gram weight penalty for the spur, but like I mentioned, this bike is definitely intended for some rowdier riding, so keep that in mind. And if you've already got a bunch of components or you wanna build up your dream bike, frame and shock, 3,000 bucks, that comes with that Sid Lux that you see on the back of this one. All right, let's talk about suspension, and it's pretty straightforward on the back of the spur. The Sid Lux shock, it's compressed from above by that tiny little rocker link that's also carbon fiber. Now, one big talking point here is that there's no axle pivot on the spur, Transition is using engineered flex instead, and we're actually seeing a fair bit of it these days. Keep in mind that sealed bearings are not light and neither is the hardware and everything else that you need to hold it all together. So instead, they've engineered flex into the back of those seat stays. Flex pivots are not new. They have been around forever and they've been very reliable. It's a proven way to save weight on a short travel bike like the Spur. That's enough on the suspension. Let's talk frame details. There's a threaded bottom bracket and a head tube that accepts press-in cups so that riders can install angle adjusting headsets. Water bottles, you can fit a big one inside the front triangle and cable routing goes inside the frame for the rear derailleur and it's tube in tube. And that means that you push it in and it will come right out that hole there without you having to scream at it. The rear brake, it's mounted on the outside of the frame and that makes it easy in case you have any maintenance troubles that you need to deal with. All right, other details, there's a set of threaded bosses underneath the top tube for a tool kit, as well as two ISCG chain guide mounts around the bottom bracket shell. That will let you bolt on one of those tiny little chain guides. Last but not least, there's some integrated chain stay protection that I think looks a whole lot nicer than those bumpy things as well as they do work. All right, let's talk about the geometry now and transition. They definitely have the most extreme geometry of all the bikes in my little test group. I'm five foot 10 and I'm on a large. That has a very roomy 480 millimeter reach. The bike also has a 66 degree head angle, making it the most relaxed steering bike here. There's also a 75.9 degree seat angle. Why not just call it 76? I don't know. And all sizes across the board get 435 millimeter chain stays. Okay, that's all the details on the transition spur. Let's get to how this thing rides. As usual, we're gonna talk about setup first. Anything to note here? Yeah, there actually is something different to note about the spur. So transition says that you can run uh, anywhere from 25 to 35% sag, which is Huge a pretty wide range. range for a 120 millimeter travel bike. Um, I tried 25, I tried 30 and I tried 35. I liked it at 30 the most. So that's what we ran it at 30% in the back. And then of course we put on those Schwalbe control tires. Like, like all the other bikes. Like all the other bikes. You guys are probably tired of hearing that. Uh, and then we hit the trails. 
Spec wise, transition pretty much nailed it out of the box. So there's nothing to change. It has a long stroke dropper post. It has a wide handlebar and a short stem. All the things you need. Transition obviously didn't make this bike to dominate the climbs. That's no. not, yeah, who'd have thought, right? <laughs> it's slack, it's long, it's made to go fast on the downs and have fun, um, just to get to the top. That's the idea here. And that's kind of what it feels like too. Uh, in the tech stuff, it is tricky. The bike feels much longer than some of the other bikes I'm riding and it's slacker, of course. That steep seat angle, it certainly helps a lot but there's no hiding the length. So you just need to be aware of where your wheels are more than you would be on a bike that's shorter. So yeah. easier on like gravel road climbs maybe than technical climbs? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Those gravel road climbs, you just go straight up it. You don't even really have to think about line choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the, on the efficiency front, this thing, it feels extremely sporty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know it's not a race bike, but it only has 120 millimeters. I never felt like I had to reach down for that cheater switch but it has a lot of traction and that helps you cause. And yeah, you just plan ahead. Take the wide line. Take the wide line. Always right. take the wide line with take your transition spur. Yeah. <laughs> That's the new tagline. Exactly. <laughs>so the spur lets you look at the trail like you were on a trail bike or even something maybe even more aggressive than that really yeah this does not ride like a cross-country bike uh, i felt super comfortable on this thing some right. of us maybe didn't feel so comfy watching you riding this I had, especially in filming <laughs> yeah, i had a few close calls but i think that really speaks to how capable this bike is you get on this thing and like i just wanted to go faster uh, it feels super composed. It stays on the deck when you want it to. It doesn't feel all skittery. And I mean, if you're more comfortable, you go faster, right? You have more yeah, room in your brain to, to process things. And, and that's exactly what happens on the spur compared to the other cross country. So it kind of slows down the trail so you can go faster almost. Yeah, exactly. Why do you think that is? I mean, it really comes down to geometry. It's slacker, it's longer, and it rides exactly like that. And it gives you more room for air. It's like the edge is farther away from you. Seems like the opposite bit. of all the XC bikes, you yeah, know? Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Spur had the fastest downhill lap, which did not surprise me one bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it was third overall on the loop. Uh, and it made most of that up on the descent. Uh, it wasn't too shabby on the climbs, but middle of the pack there. As far as the efficiency test goes, uh, again, it was middle of the pack. It was on the same second as a lot of other bikes, uh, beat by that Speedy Canyon, but- You Canyon. wouldn't expect it to win that. Yeah. A big part of riding is how the components fare. What were they like on the spur? Uh, good, but not flawless. So one up dropper posts, they usually just go and go and go and I never have to touch them. Uh, this one is a long travel one, so that's great, mm -hmm. but it definitely was a little finicky with cable tension for some reason. I don't know why, but it needed constant adjustment. Uh, the other reliability issue, it's a SID with bushing play. Performance wise, the fork worked extremely well, but it developed bushing play. So RockShox says, if you have a SID uh, with bushing play, reach out to them and they'll sort you out right away. A couple other things, They've specced aluminum wheels on this bike. Obviously that helps keep the price down, but it's also probably appropriate for how this bike is meant to be ridden. And then four piston brakes, so Kazma will be happy. Of course. And then, you know, if any short travel bike deserves four piston brakes, it's probably this probably one. Probably this one, yeah. yeah. What were some of the things that you liked most about this bike? So some of the pros. Well, I mean, the big obvious pro here is that this is obviously a Descenders cross country bike. Uh, this thing was made to shred the downs and it does exactly that and it does it really, really well. So if that's what you're all about, this is your bike. Of course, we have to talk about the cons. What were some of the things that you didn't like as much? Uh, well, I think the big one here, and it's, it, it is hard to fault transition for this, is that it's obviously a handful, relatively speaking, on the climbs. It climbs. doesn't climb like an e-bike? Come uh, on, in their video, they said. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a motor, so yes, of course. Uh, but it's really just the length and the geometry. You know, Casimir, we could argue all day about it being just fine in the climbs, and it is just fine in the climbs. But if you're someone who counts your dabs, I mean, this isn't your bike, and that's not what it was intended for. So there you go. So 
So who is the ideal person that is gonna really thrive and enjoy this bike? Well, in case it wasn't obvious already, this is definitely a downhillers cross country bike. Uh, it's for somebody that likes the energy of a short travel bike, but they still wanna take chances on the descents and they still like to pedal. You wear knee pads on your short travel bike, yeah. This is probably a good option. Yeah, it's probably a good option. <laughs> so that's it for Transitions All New Spur. Stay tuned for more field test videos and roundtable discussions. I'm trying to think of a spur of the moment joke. Got one? Not nope, so much. Nothing. Let's get our baggies. Let's go riding. Sounds good. All right.